Praise the Lord. Today's message is entitled, Face Your Fears. Amen. Face them head on. Fear is real, whether we understand that or not. As human beings, there is a tendency for each and every one of us at some point in our life to be afraid. So fear is just an emotion that each and every one of us experiences at some point in our life. And so human beings, we tend to be afraid of things sometimes that are legitimate. And some are just imaginary. But they are threats to us. And so we are afraid of things that are legitimately a threat to us. And sometimes we are afraid of things that we imagined them to be so. And so we are scared. We get scared. We get afraid. We have fear. What are some of the things human beings tend to be afraid of? Some of us are afraid of human uh, animals. Bugs. Uh, reptiles. Snakes. I'm scared of a snake. I see a snake right now. Hey, I am gone. So I'm scared of snakes. But I'm not scared of like bugs. I'm not scared of a rat. No. But I'm scared of a snake. But whilst I'm scared of a snake, somebody is not scared of a snake, but somebody is scared of a, of a mosquito. Somebody is scared of a bug. So each and every one of us is scared of something. But why are we scared of these things? For us, it, it's a threat. The reason I'm scared of a snake is I'm scared if a snake bites me, it might, I might get, catch some, something or it might be a poisonous snake. And I might die. See? And that's also something that some of us are scared of. Some of us are scared of dying. You heard what uh, Bob Marley said, right? Everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die. Most of us are scared of death. And some of us too are scared of heights. The other day, I was in an elevator with somebody, and the person was gripping onto the, uh, uh, the sidebar, and you could see that she was, her eyes were closed, and she was holding on. She was scared of elevators. Being in an elevator was something, but it, it was a tall building, 16 stories, so she couldn't go up the stairs. So she had to be in the elevator, and she was dead scared. Some are afraid of flying. So there are some people who will never be on an airplane. They would rather drive 10 hours when an airplane could give them an hour flight. They'll know. It's their fear. Some of the fears are legitimate. Some of the fears are imaginary. Those who are afraid of flying, every time they hear of a plane crash, it makes it worse. So those who are afraid of uh, uh, animals, if you hear that an animal had uh, bitten somebody or, or attacked somebody, oh, the fear gets worse. So each and every one of us has a phobia or a fear of something. Some are afraid of water. You're afraid to drown. You never catch them near a, a, a river or even a swimming pool. They're afraid to die. They're afraid they might drown. They're afraid of the water. You never catch them in a even swimming pool they are scared of, let alone a river, or let alone a fast flowing river, or the sea, or the ocean. Oh my goodness, they go to the beach. I'll be right here. I'll just, I'll just watch you guys. You guys go and have fun in the water. Even their legs might not touch the water. Why? Because they are fear, afraid. Hallelujah. Some are afraid of war because war kills people. People die in wars. And sometimes it's even innocent people die. Look at what's happening between the Israelites and the, uh, in Gaza uh, against the Palestinians. And some people who have died are innocent. They have nothing to do. They probably don't even support what uh, Hamas did. And yet they are dying. So that fear is real. Fear is real. But what we are afraid of, some are legitimate or real fears, and some you are imagining it yourself. One day when I was in college, 
University of Cape Coast. I, I was in a hall that was on the other side of campus. So I came to the, the old site and I studied late into the night and I was going back home, back to my hall, through one of the villages, Apeuska was the name. So as I went round one of the, the a, a turn, I saw somebody standing there with a bushy hair, a Rastafarian kind of hair. And I had heard stories, not on campus, but I had heard stories of people who had experienced or had interactions with, with local guards. And so when I saw this man standing in the darkness with bushy hair, the first thought that came into my head was, oh, I'm experiencing a postica God. Then a split second later, this the person put a cigarette to the mouth and started, well, later on I realized it was uh, weed. He was smoking marijuana. So he put it to the mouth and took a big puff and pushed out the smoke. And then all of a sudden I told myself, whew, that's a relief because I was scared. Look, I could have fainted that night right there in Apuska. If he hadn't smoked, I bet you I probably would have fainted. But because he put that smoke to the mouth and took a puff and puffed it out, I told myself, oh, a God wouldn't be smoking, so I kept going. It was an imaginary fear that I had, but I was afraid. I was scared. I could have peed my pants. So fear is real. And so in, in our life, there are some things that happen in our life. There are some things that happen around us that create fear in us. And today I'm here to tell you we have to find a way to face that fear. Some of us are afraid to lose our uh, marriages. You are in a terrible marriage, and yet you are stuck in it. You are in a job that is taking you for granted, and you are still there. You are afraid to leave. You are afraid that if you leave, what would happen to me? You are afraid that if I leave, how am I going to take care of myself? If you, you are afraid that if I leave, why, why would I? I'm so old. Am I going to start all over again? Oh, I, all these things that are going on in my life. Yes, I don't like them, but I'm afraid of what the future is. We have to face our fear. Today's message is face that fear. Because if you don't face the fear, you will never get to the other side. You will be stuck on this side of the crisis. You will be stuck on this side of the situation. So if you are in a bad marriage, if you are in a bad job, if you are in a bad uh, situation, if you are facing a problem and you don't t face that fear and take a step of faith, you will find yourself still in it. So you are in, in, in a well. You fall in a well. You are afraid of heights. So how are you going to go up? You are, then you're going to stuck in, be stuck in the well. So some of us, we are in that downward situation. We are in that downward spiral. We are in that, that, that crisis and we are scared out of our wits. And we can't move forward. Today the message is face your fear. Amen. So we read from Joshua chapter 1. And in Joshua chapter 1, Joshua, God talks to Joshua. See, Moses had led the people of Israel out of Egypt all the way. And they got somewhere and Moses went up the mountain and never came back down. And so God calls uh, Joshua and tells Joshua, Joshua, you are now in charge. Amen. Joshua, you are now in charge. But there is something I need you to do. I need you to go over the Jordan. You can't stay on this side. I've given the promised land to you. You have to take the people across the Jordan to the other side. But there is a, there's something that I know you're capable of doing. And I don't want you to do that. So Joshua chapter 1 and verse 1 
It says, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' aid, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now then, you and all these people, get ready to cross the river Jordan into the land I'm about to give you. Hallelujah. Into the land that I, God, I'm about to give you. Then he tells them that I will give you every place where you set your foot as I have promised Moses. But then God wants you to take that step of faith forward. God wants you to go. God wants you to do. God wants you to help. God wants you to support. God wants you to do something. And if every attempt at what you, you, God wants you to do, if you do it, God says he will give you that place. If you take that step of faith, hallelujah. Then he gets to verse 5, and God says to Moses, uh, Joshua says, No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. And as I was with Moses, I will be with you. God is telling you that he will be with you. Wherever you go, he will be with you. That step of faith that you are about to take, he will be with you. So don't be afraid. So he says to Joshua in verse 6, he says, be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to the island. So he says to Joshua, be strong, be courageous. Brethren, God is telling you today, be strong. Be courageous, be strong, be courageous, be strong, be courageous. And he says it three times, verse 6, verse 7, and verse 9. Verse 6, he says, be strong and courageous. Verse 7, be strong and courageous. Um, and then verse 9, he says, be strong and courageous. Then he adds to it, have I, God, not told you this? Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous? Me, God, I'm saying to you, be strong and courageous. It's not somebody else telling you. It's not Reverend Amo telling you to be strong and courageous. God is saying to you, be strong and be courageous. Then God continues, he says, so do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God, I will be with you wherever you go. Hallelujah. That's the answer to your fear. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be dismayed. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you. That's why you shouldn't be afraid. That's why you should face your fear. That fear of moving. That fear of going forward. That fear of that exam. That fear of that breakup. That fear of that situation. That fear, that fear, that fear, that fear that you are experiencing. God says be strong and be courageous. God says that do not be afraid. Do not be dismayed. Do not be disappointed. Do not be discouraged. For he, God, will be with you. If you don't believe that God will be with you, if you don't believe that God's promise holds true for you, then of course you can keep being afraid. And you can stay wherever you are. Stay in that same situation. Stay in that terrible job. Stay in that hole that you are in. And, and, and hang there. But if you're going to trust your God, and you're going to call on your God. And you're going to ask God to take control over that situation. Then God says he will be with you. And he will help you. So, Because he's the one telling you to go. He's the one asking you to make that move. He's the one who's asking you to get away from there. He's the one telling you don't take that, that easy road. He's the one telling you don't take that broad road that everybody is on. Take that narrow path. He's the one telling you go to the right and not to the left. If, he, if you go to the right, then he will be with you. See, and, and one of the things God said to uh, Joshua in verse 6 says, Keep the book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you'll be careful to do everything written in it. Then you'll be prosperous and successful. So what God is telling us is those of us who are children of God, we have to put, take note of the word of God. 
We have to read the word of God. We have to meditate on the word of God. We need some verses that will encourage us when our fears come. We need things that will help us to make the right decision. We need words that will help us to make the right step. See, last uh, I was telling you about Jesus' uh, um, trials and temptation by the devil. Jesus did not answer the devil with just words. He used the word of God. He says, it is written. So, brother, you too, in order for you to build that confidence of your God being with you, you have to be grounded in the word of God. Because if you are grounded in the word of God, then you can rely on the word of God to make that move. Hallelujah. To make that move. So rely on the word of God. Read the word of God. Meditate on the word of God so that you are grounded enough to have that confidence to take that step of faith. Be strong. Be courageous. But it is important that you understand not to be afraid. It is important that you understand not to be discouraged. It is important for you to understand that God says he's going to be with you. And he who has said he's going to be with you, he will be with you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Joshua chapter 1 verse 9. Hallelujah. Okay, then we read another story in Mark chapter 4. And it tells the story of the disciples, Jesus and his disciples, being, finding themselves in a storm. Hallelujah. Oh, and when the storm came, the, the disciples were scared. So, Mark chapter 4 and verse 34 says, That day, when evening came, he said to his disciples, Let's go to the other side. Say, brother, we can't stay on this side alone. We can't be here. We have to go to the other side. We have to move to the other side. We have to move to the other place. We have to move to that other job. We have to move to that other house. We have to move to that location. So they moved. But leaving the crowd behind. So whenever you are moving into something, whenever you are moving away from some place, whenever you are going into one direction, you have to leave the crowd behind. The people of Israel had to leave Egypt and go to the promised land. Lot had to leave Sodom and Gomorrah and go to the new place. Abraham had to leave and go to the, where God had promised him. You need to leave. Sometimes you need to leave. But brethren, if God is not asking you to leave, don't just leave because the prof says leave. But if God is asking you to leave, then leave. The people of Israel, when they got, they got to a place, they got there and they, they settled. And God says, get up, move. This is not where I want you to be. There is somewhere else I want you to go. That's where you're going. Joshua, God was telling them they were on this side of the Jordan. God says, cross the Jordan and go to the other side. In fact, the land that was on the east of the Jordan, is it the east or the west? The west of the Jordan. They had to cross to the east of the Jordan. Only three tribes, actually it was two and a half, two and a half of the tribes had that land. So Joshua told them, come with us. Let's go and fight and gain the other land for the other nine or nine and a half tribes. So that they will also have their land. And when we finish the war, you can come back and live. And they said, yes. They had to cross the Jordan. So they leave the crowd behind. And they took him along. And he was in the boat with them. But if, verse 37 Mark chapter 4, a furious squall, a storm came up and the waves broke over the boat and so that it was nearly swamped and they were about to drown. Jesus was at the stern of the boat, or at the back of the boat, sleeping on a cushion, on a pillow. The disciples woke him up and said to him, teacher, don't you care? That we are drowning. They were scared. They were afraid. The storm was too furious. And since the wave was breaking over the boat, there was the tendency that it might capsize the boat, they might fall in the boat, and they might drown. I've said this. 
the, is, uh, the disciples, the 12 apostles, Peter, James, John, they were all uh, fishermen. So they knew storms. They knew storms. It, a storm is not uh, 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 um, new to a fisherman. But they're able to read storms. And they know this one is good. This one is not good. This one we can go through. It. This one we shouldn't. But this particular storm, even those in the, all the disciples there, they looked at the four, four uh, fishermen amongst them, and they were scared too. So they went and woke Jesus up. Hey, Jesus, wake up. We are drowning. Don't you care that we will all perish? It was fear that gripped them. So Jesus woke up, and Jesus rebuked the storm, and the storm stilled. Brethren, maybe you are in a storm right now. Jesus will rebuke that storm for you. God will rebuke that situation for you. God will turn it around for you. God will make a way where there seems to be no way in that situation you find yourself in. Oh, you see, the disciples, as I said, the four fishermen could have struggled. If Jesus was not on the boat, they would have struggled and tried to get out of the storm as best as they can. But God was there. Jesus with them. They went and woke him up. Brethren, wake up your God. Oh, call on your God and say, Lord, I am in this situation. I am scared and I don't know what to do. Lord, save me. Lord, help me. Lord, bring me out of this situation. And Jesus woke up and he stilled the storm. Brethren, if you call on your God, your God will still your storm for you. That storm you are in, that situation you are in, that fear you have, God will help you out of that fear. God will take that situation away from there so that you are no longer afraid. He says, I'm going to be with you. He promised Joshua. He's promising you. Because Jesus was with them, because God is with you, he will steal your storm. Because God is with you, you don't need to be afraid. Hallelujah. So when the storm was still and completely calm, he said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Why, why, why are you so afraid? Right, and the question is to you too. Why are you scared to take that step of faith? Why are you scared that things are going crazy in your life? Why are you scared? Hello? Hello? Okay. Let me, let me log back in. Right in? They can't hear me. Let me log back in. Okay, now you can hear me? Yes. Okay, good. Then let's go. So, so God was speaking, Jesus stilled the storm for the disciples. So, why was Jesus able to still the storm for the disciples? Because he was on the boat with them. And God is saying to you that he is with you. So, that storm you are in, that situation you are in, that crisis you are facing, that is going a certain way. Oh, you just have to take that step of faith. Because God is with you. Call on him and he will be with you in your time of trouble. So God is asking them, why are you afraid? Brethren, why are you afraid? Why are you scared? Why do you have that fear when God is with you? Why were they afraid when Jesus was in the boat? Because their faith was shaken. But then you too, sometimes the fear you have is because your faith is shaken. Because you have heard things. So I just told you about that, that story I had heard about the local God in the area. Oh, so me too, I got scared that day. So it's real. But don't be afraid. Hallelujah. But in verse 41, even after Jesus had stilled the storm for the disciples, even after the things were made calm, and Jesus asked them, why were you afraid? Where is your faith? Verse 41 says, they were terrified. 
Now they are not even afraid of. What? What? They were terrified and asked each other, who is this man that can speak to the storm? So, so, so the, their fear increased instead of decreasing. But this time they were afraid of who they had with them. They wondered, wow, somebody that we walk with, eat with, talk with, can speak to the storm and it will get better. Things will get better. Really? So do not be afraid. That's, that's who you have. They were, you see, you're not the only one. Moses, Moses. When God called Moses at the burning bush and told Moses, I need you to go back to the Israelites, go back to Egypt and go and tell the Pharaoh to let my people go. Eesh. Moses was scared to go back. Moses was scared that if he goes, eesh, the people won't believe me. Moses was scared that if I go and I tell the Pharaoh, hey, what would happen? God assured him. I am with you. I will be with you. And I will see you through this journey, this message, this assignment, this, this mission that I am giving you. God is assuring you that he will be with you. See, and then one of the ex excuses Moses gave was, me, as for me, I can't talk. I'm a, I stutter. I'm trying to say what? Stop. I can't do it. So how do I go to the king and I start stuttering in front of the king? It will show that I am weak. God says, don't worry. I'll give you somebody who will speak for you. I'm giving you Aaron. Go with Aaron and Aaron will do the talking for you. Tell Aaron as simply as you can and Aaron will tell it. Ready? Whatever resource you need to overcome that fear, Whatever help you need to overcome that fear, God is assuring you that since he's the one sending you on this mission, he will give you the support you need. He will give you the help you need. He will give you the ability you need. He will give you the skill you need to overcome that fear that you have. He will give you. So God sent Moses and they went. With his rod, he did a miracle. He had only a rod. God said, put it down. He became a snake. And when he got there, he did it in front of Pharaoh. Pharaoh says, shoot, you think this is, a, this is magic? Shoot. He called his magicians. They also dropped their rods. They all turned to snakes too. But Moses' rod that had turned into a snake was able to swallow up all the other uh, snakes. That's when God is with you. And you are doing what God wants you to do. So that fear, all of a sudden, Moses' fear was gone. Moses' fear. And any time he needed to say something, any time he needed to do something, he told Aaron, and Aaron was there to say it for him. Right? And God is going to be with you. Hezekiah, another example of somebody who was also afraid. Hezekiah is another one. Hezekiah was a king of Israel. And whilst he was there, oh, they were attacked. Or they, he got a letter that they, they were going to be attacked. Fear gripped Hezekiah. And you think you're the only one who, who's afraid of some things? Fear gripped him. He realized that, though that army that is coming, it's stronger than us. It's more powerful than us. It's bigger than us. It has more resources than us. Oh, I am in trouble. So Hezekiah took the letter and he went to the temple and placed the letter on the altar and he prayed. And he prayed. And God gave him an answer. And God told him, do not be afraid. Go. This battle is not yours. But in the battle you are scared of facing is not yours. God is in control. He will fight that battle for you. He will see you through it. He will see you through that sickness. He will see you through that breakup. He will see you through that divorce. He will see you through that loss of a job. He will see you through it. If only he is the one asking you to go. And if you need his help, call on him. And he will give you the answer. He will show you the way forward. Elijah, another one. Elijah is a prophet of God. He had just done a miracle where he had a battle with the, the Baal worshippers. 400 Baal prophets. He alone. They had killed all the other prophets. So he alone, he told the Baal priests, 400 of them, come. Let's have a contest. 
pray to your God and see if God will send fire from your God will send fire from heaven or wherever it is to come and 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 burn this offering. And then they struggled all day, calling on their God, that bow God, and nothing happened. Then Elijah also says, "Okay, give me, now it's my turn. They take the offering, they put it on the altar." And he asked them to pour water on the altar. So they poured water on the offering and the water until the trench they dug around it was full of water. So that the wood was soaking wet, the animal was soaking wet, everything is soaking wet. So that they wouldn't say that he had some fire under there. He prayed, the fire came down and it burned. And then he told the people, kill all the prophets because they are bad prophets. They are leading us astray and they are doing what God has told us in, in the Ten Commandments, not to worship any idol before him. And here you are, you all you people you are following these 400 uh, fake prophets, leading us astray. Kill them and they killed them. The person who brought Baal worship to the land was Jezebel. And she was the queen, queen to Ahab, King Ahab. And Queen Jezebel got upset when she heard that all her priests had been killed. So he swore, Aish, Elijah, you are dead. I will make sure you are dead. And Elisha got scared. And Elisha ran. He ran from where he was because he was scared of Queen Jezebel. He was somebody who had just done this miracle. It's now scared of another human being. Here was your God come through for you. And instead of calling on him in that time of where he, fear gripped him and he ran. And whilst he was running, God called him and says, where are you going? Ready? where are you going? Why is fear causing you to run? Why is fear causing you to go in the opposite direction than where I want you to go? And God told him, I'm going to use you to do something. And he used him. And he overcame that fear that he had of Jezebel. And Jezebel in the end was killed. He died. She died. She died before Elijah died. Hallelujah. So you see, that fear you have it may be real. It may be illegitimate. But the answer is for you to trust the God who says he's going to be with you. Call on your God and trust him. Let him be with you. Let him take you through it. Hallelujah. So let me give you a few verses that will help you in whenever you are afraid. Let's turn our Bibles to the book of Psalms. Psalm 118, verse 6 to 9. Open with me to the book of Psalms. 118, if you have your, you write it down so that you can, anytime you are, you find yourself scared, read this verse. Hallelujah. Psalm 118 and verse 6 says, the Lord is with me. I will not be afraid. Brethren, anytime you find yourself scared, tell yourself, read this. God says he's going to be with me. I will not be afraid. What? Can mere mortals do to me? Elijah, God says, do not be afraid. What can Jezebel do to you? So, brethren, anytime you find yourself scared of a situation, of something, tell yourself, God is with me. I will not be afraid. What can a mere mortal do to me? So if somebody is doing something to you, or you are scared that somebody will do something to you, or will treat you a certain way, or will put you in crisis, or will put you in trouble, tell yourself, my God is with me, I will not be afraid. My God is with me, I will not be afraid. Amen. Verse 7 says, the Lord is with me. He is my helper. God is going to be your helper, brethren. I look in triumph on my enemy. Look, you will overcome your enemy. Verse 8. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in human beings. Hallelujah. It's better to put your trust and hope in God than to put your hope and trust in man. Verse 9. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in princes. 
or in the government, or in the president, or in the governor, or in the minister, or in this. No, it is better to put your hope and trust your God in your God. You heard of the song that says, uh, your father may, uh, forgotten, so let me skip it, it just slipped my mind. But it's talking about, if God will never forsake you. God will never disappoint you. God will, ne will always come through for you. Your brother may disappoint you. Your father may disappoint you. Your sister may disappoint you. Your friend may disappoint you. The people around you may disappoint you. But God will never let you down. If he has promised that he's going to be with you, he will always be with you. If he has promised you and asked you to take that step of faith, he will be with you as you take that step of faith. Hallelujah. So that's Psalm 118, verse 6 to 9. Let's read John 14. Let me give you another one. I'm giving you three verses that you can live with anytime you find yourself afraid. Psalm, uh, John chapter 14, the Gospel of St. John in chapter 14. And verse 26, hallelujah, verse 26, it says, and, But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and remind you of everything I have said. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world will give. Do not let your heart be troubled. God is telling you, do not let your heart be troubled. Hallelujah. Do not let your heart to be troubled. And do not be afraid. You have heard me say, Jesus is still speaking, verse 28, says, you have heard me say, I am going away, but I am coming back to you. And if you love me and you will be glad that I'm going to my father, the father is greater than I am. So do not be afraid. My sister, do not be afraid. My brother, do not be afraid. Oh, you who is hearing me, who is as hearing, getting this message, do not be afraid. Fear not, for I am with you. Hallelujah. Fear not, fear not. So second, last one, let me give you the last one and then we'll bring it to a close. Second Timothy. Hallelujah. Second Timothy chapter one and verse seven. It says, for the spirit God gave us does not make us timid and it gives us power love and self-discipline god has not given you the spirit of fear that fear is not from god it's from the enemy so do not be afraid for god has rather given you that spirit of power god has given you the spirit of love and god has given you the spirit of self-discipline that's what you need, brethren. That's what you need. You have power. You have love. You have self-discipline. So do not. God did not give you that fear. That fear that has gripped you, God did not give it to you. God did not give you that fear. So I end by saying, fear has two meanings. Hallelujah. Fear has two meanings. One, you can either forget everything. F, forget. E, everything. And a, and, and run. Run away. Or you can face everything and rise. Acronym. F-E-A-R. You can forget everything and run scared. Or you can face everything and rise. The choice is yours. What's, what's going to be your choice today? When you are caught up in a fear. Will you forget everything that you know about God, about God's love, God being with you and everything and be scared and run or stay where you are? Or you will remember everything and face everything and rise. I pray this, that as you hear this message, may you face your fears. May you face everything and rise. And may victory be yours. May success be yours. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Face your fear. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you.